Hey guys, it's Walker Dybel, author of Buy Then Build and creator of the Acquisition Lab. Today, what we're going to talk about is over the last 17 years that I've been practicing acquisition entrepreneurship, I want to cover the 10 things that I've learned about debt uh, during this time. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the first thing is that debt actually can protect your return on investment, if not provide your return on investment. And what the heck does that mean? Let me say it like this. Let's pretend that you buy something, <clears throat> a business, for $100, okay? Now, if that's boring, uh, just add zeros until it gets interesting for you. And you bought this company with 50, you know, $50 in uh, cash infusion or equity, okay? And $50 um, in, in debt, okay? Now, <clears throat> I'm not gonna say that that is normal, uh, but I'm also not gonna say that it's abnormal in terms of how deals get done. Let's just use this as an example. Now, some time goes by, okay? And during this time, uh, the cash flow of the business actually eliminates um, the debt altogether, okay? So you bought this thing for 100 bucks. Um, the cash flow from it pays off the $50 in debt that you had, and you're in it at, at a pretty sizable um, um, equity infusion of 50% of the entire value. But while you're managing this company, you completely blow it, okay? Um, you know, members of your team quit, uh, big customers uh, don't like you and they leave, um, uh, the, the, the external economy uh, falls to pieces, uh, and so during, you end up selling it at a, at a loss or less than what you bought it for, for $75, okay? So you bought it for 100, you sold for 75. We all know, that you're supposed to buy low and sell high. In this case, it didn't, it didn't work out. Now, here's the point. Um, you're not actually in at $100. You're only in at $50, okay? And so you put in $50, the vehicle paid off the debt along the way, and then you sold it for 75. So that's actually a gain of $25, or a 50% gain in this case. Um, in very loose math, let's say you owned it for, for um, 10, uh, five years, and that's a you know 10 10 percent uh, annual return. Um, so just as an example, so debt can actually protect, if not provide, um, your your return on investment. Okay. Number two, debt is actually attracted to value. Okay. In other words, let me say it like this: um, when you have something of intrinsic value, especially something that's cash flowing, right? you've got something that's literally bankable, okay? You can go to the bank and say, look, this thing has uh, cash flow coming in, it's generating value, and the bank will look at that and say, this has intrinsic and tangible value, we will give you the money. It's a tra it wants to be part of your, of your mission, okay? It, 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 it's like a magnet how it, how it attracts to, to value. If you have something of value and want to uh, get debt in order to um, per acquire it, uh, it's very simple. The, the, the money wants to come in very quickly. Um, number three, uh, oh, sorry. And number two, the contrast of that would be, you know, sort of like equity, right? Where people, you're raising funds and so people are, are buying equity from you and they're giving you cash investments in, in exchange for that equity. Well, it, it, th these are people that are investing on um, um, the potential, the, the future potential of your project, whereas debt wants to look at the tangible value of the thing itself and say, yes, that is valuable. We know it's valuable. Let me go ahead and um, um, attach myself as debt to you. Um, number three, it's cheaper than equity. So the thing is, is that a lot of times entrepreneurs like to think about, hey, I'm going to go raise a bunch of capital. Uh, because you know uh, that will give me the money to fund uh, what it is that I want to do. Well, in the private capital markets, okay, angel investments, VC investments, um, uh, search fund investors, any type of investment in the private market is going to be looking for and expecting a 35% uh, uh, internal rate of return on their uh, invested dollars. Okay, this is the going rate for the the sort of high risk startup or anything that entrepreneurs are dealing with. Okay. Um, if you've got something of value, you might be able to get it cheaper, maybe 25%, okay? But the point is, is that debt, you know, like getting a loan to, for a business acquisition today anyway, you know, I mean, you're looking at, you know, maybe 4%, okay? Let's fast forward a few years, uh, maybe it's 8%, okay? 
um, you know, it's been 8% in, in, in my life, but, but the point is, 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 you know, four to 8% is not 35%, okay? Not only that, but when you raise equity, um, uh, what that means is, is you're giving the equity of your company away, which is the very thing of value that you wanna keep. Whereas um, when debt comes in, it's cheap. You do have to pay it every single month, but it's significantly cheaper um, than the equity piece. Um, uh, number four, uh, there is bad debt and there is good debt, okay? Uh, this is not a new concept, but the concept here is, is bad debt is things that aren't necessarily j things of value. So we talked about how debt is attracted to tangible value. Good debt is gonna be things with, you know, um, the, like the, the, the inexpensive interest rates that are then generating cash flow and building assets for you, okay? Um, so so um, uh, when you have bad debt, okay, it's going to be either expensive, okay, or the most important defining characteristic is it's either depreciating assets or it was experiences. So pretty much anything on your credit card is really bad debt. That's like the worst debt I can ever think of because you know it's gonna be you know whatever, whatever you put on it, meals, vacations, you know, even your kid's camp or something like that, right? And then it's really expensive at like 18%, okay, plus or minus, so it's really expensive and it's not, it's not contributing to your cash flow or your wealth, okay? Uh, or, or, for, or providing you to, to build anything. Uh, number five, it can afford things that you can't, okay? So in this example, pretend that you had the $50, but you didn't have $100, okay? Uh, you can go out and get $50 in debt in order to acquire this, all right? Now, I, again, you know, I bought my first company. Um, I closed on my first company in 2006, and so um, it's one of these things where, you know, I didn't have any money. I, I didn't have any money of consequence at that time. I, look, I didn't have any money. I really didn't. And so it's one of these where I was able to use leverage uh, in order to um, buy that company. Okay. The company then paid down uh, the, the debt uh, that I used to acquire it. And then ultimately I sold that company. Right. And so by being able to afford those things, or uh, if you own a business already and you want to grow through acquisition or you want to buy a, a, a additional um, equipment in order to build things, uh, this debt can, can provide uh, the cash in order to acquire things that will help you generate value. Number six, it's faster to get. Uh, anyone that has raised equity uh, knows that in a startup, um, you know, if you, if you look, you, you know, if, if you live in Silicon Valley and you're a repeat performer and you've got a series of, of investors that just sort of invest in you because you already invented Facebook or whatever, you know, if you can call, you know, someone like Brad Feld and he wants to invest uh, and you can do that in five minutes, then he'll probably make a phone call and your whole round will be full in a day. Now, most people, that's not, that's not the case. In fact, I would, I would say north of 99% of the population, that's not how things work. Uh, if you want to raise equity, especially if you're a first time entrepreneur, all right, it's hard, it's hard. And this is going to take, you know, six to 24 months and equity raises are not revenue. You're not actually generating anything of value yet. You're just spending all of your time uh, raising that cash. And so you've got really a two, two jobs, one raising capital and two growing the actual business. All right. So get that right now. That's going to take, you know, it's a full-time job raising that, that, that capital, pretend it's a part-time job, whatever. You can get a bank loan in 90 days if, you're look, if you've got something uh, that is bankable, that has intrinsic value, okay? So you find something of value, you can't afford it. Uh, I can run around for a while and give my equity away at an expensive rate, or I can go to the bank and I can get a loan and I can, I can buy this company and then generate cash flow for myself, pay the debt down, uh, pay the employees, use the cash flow to build um, uh, more valuable things inside the business, et cetera. It's faster to get and it saves so much of your time. Your time is not free, okay? Do not make that mistake. Uh, number seven, you must actually be committed to what it is you're trying to do, okay? And what I mean by this is that um, most debt in acquisitions uh, is gonna have some kind of personal guarantee, okay? Um, so the thing is, is that the bank will basically say, look, uh, Walker, uh, uh, I, I, I like the fact that you want to buy this company, uh, but uh, we're going to need a personal guarantee on this money that we're trying to give you. Okay. Uh, at first I spent a lot of time trying to figure out ways to get around it. All right. And what I've learned in the long term 
is that if you don't have a personal guarantee on your debt, there's usually some other piece of collateral there, okay? Um, that, they, that they're trying to hold on to, okay? The, the, for example, let's just say you've got $100 sitting in your bank account and you say, well, I want the 50, but I'm not gonna sign a personal guarantee. They might say, fine, but we're gonna collateralize it with these assets of yours, or we're gonna collateralize it with this you know, balance sheet of the company that you're buying and all of this equipment, for example. Um, so there are ways to get around it, but no matter how you slice it, um, you know, for, quite frankly, unless you're doing deals north of say 50 million, uh, getting non-recourse debt is close to impossible. It's just, hard. it's hard. Um, and so for most of us, you have to actually be committed to what you're trying to do. They'll say, look, we'll give you the money, but we need you to be committed to this. You're not just gonna throw us the keys when things get rocky, okay? So you, you, you've, gotta, you've gotta put your skin in the game, okay? Um, let's see, number eight. Uh, the loan really wants to get paid, okay? All the loan wants is to get paid. What do I mean by this? Um, equity is patient, okay? Uh, debt is not. Every month, debt needs to get paid, okay? So, you know, if you have um, a, a, a rocky quarter in your, in your business in this example, um, and cash flow gets tight, and you're trying to figure out, okay, am I gonna pay my employees or am I gonna pay the bank? That's not a question that you really can ask because the bank has to get paid, okay? There's no tomorrow if the bank isn't getting paid, all right? Which, again, there, it's the primary, um, it's, it's, the, it's the primary position, the senior position on your balance sheet, okay? And every month that needs to get paid. What I'm getting at is that in hard times, okay, do they really want to execute on this personal guarantee? They really don't want to. They want to work with you to get paid, okay? So in really bad uh, times, negotiating with the bank to trying to find something that the asset can afford is what the bank really wants because they want that thing there existing, paying them every month. If you look at their balance sheet, okay, your loan is on their asset column and it's generating cash flow for them, okay? So they do have the upper hand in bad situations and I'm not trying to belittle this, okay? The point is, is that if you do find yourself in a bad situation, they will do everything they can to work with you so just be constructive in your conversations and negotiate um, you know, what you can get done. One easy example of that is moving to interest only. So you're gonna greatly reduce uh, the, 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 cash flow, the burden on cash flow while you're paying interest only because the amount that you're paying is so much smaller. Plus interest, of course, is expensed on your P&L, so it's reducing your taxable uh, income on that, on that entity anyway whereas principal payments are actually a cash event, usually protected by the depreciation and amortization. But the, but the, the thing is, is that um, if, if you're in a bad spot, you can usually negotiate an interest-only loan. It's not necessarily in our favor in the long run, because what we want to do is build up that equity. Uh, but uh, entrepreneurship is not always up and to the right, is it, folks? It's sort of, um, it's sort of a, more of a sign graph, right? So, you know, ultimately it just wants to get paid, okay? And you've gotta, you've gotta figure out how to do that. Uh, number nine is it comes in all flavors, okay? We've got loans from the Small Business Administration. We've got traditional loans. We have mezzanine debt, okay? Seller notes, okay? Any of these are different forms of debt. And a lot of this, um, you know, equipment leases are debt, right? Like any of these things. And so the thing is, is that um, all of debt has different amortization schedules and different interest rates, okay? So, you know, a mezzanine loan might be interest only, but it's gonna be, you know, an 18% interest rate. And then when the company can pay that off, it'll, it'll knock it out. Um, other, I've seen other, other loans recently where, you know, they're, they're literally taking uh, 15 or 20% of monthly revenue right out of the bank account uh, until, the, uh, until the loan is paid off. Um, there's times for things like this, okay? Uh, but it's sort of like, um, uh, I don't wanna say gambling, it's kinda of like betting. Uh, my dad told me at a very young age, like don't make a bet unless you already know the outcome, right? Uh, some of these expensive debt vehicles for buying acquisitions, uh, remind me of that, okay? Just be sure, uh, just be sure. And can we be sure? Um, in this situation, the bank is gonna get paid, okay? So, uh, you know, you've gotta, you've gotta keep in mind that when you take high interest loans, um, you really are decreasing your own margin of safety as an acquisition entrepreneur, okay? Um, so, uh, you know, an SBA loan is a good example. It's sort of 10 years, 
um, and uh, it is floating, so it's going to fluctuate with uh, what the Fed is doing to interest rates. Um, but again, run the numbers, okay? You'll see yourself that even as interest rates go up, it's still incredibly affordable. It's still cheaper than equity, um, and it's, it's still going to be one of the best ways in order to build wealth off of these assets that you can't otherwise afford, okay? Um, or protect your ROI, as we've covered in number one. Um, and traditional loan, by the way, is, is more like a seven-year loan, okay? So seven or 10, or, you know, if you get a, a building loan, it's gonna, you know, a rental, it's gonna be 20 years, right? If you buy a business and a building together, um, they're going to wait, do a weighted average of the amortization schedule. And so you might come up with, you know, an 18-year schedule, but you've got the real estate in there as well. Um, if you're familiar with my material, uh, I, you know, I'm sort of known for saying like, keep your real estate investments and your business investments separate as a rule of thumb, and then look at it very carefully and decide if you want to actually do it. My preferred personal approach is buy the company, lease the building, usually from the seller for the first five years, and then try to buy that, uh, that real estate in year, uh, at the end of year five or year six. Okay. Get a second loan and then take that, you know, build up, build up equity, build up safety in the business then buy the building as a separate step. If your company is not gonna grow out of it, you know, you're obviously not making a real estate decision here, you're making a business decision. And the thing is, is that buying the real estate in a business situation usually means you can keep more of the cash in the business that's actually generating uh, the value for everybody, okay? Um, so it comes in lots of flavors. Um, uh, number 10, I love getting out of debt, okay? so. You know, as, as much as we can praise the sort of, you know, value that debt can provide us in terms of, you know, buying existing companies, building uh, our existing companies, expanding what we're doing, and frankly, just being able to uh, uh, build, build wealth and build up equity across a number of assets. The thing is, is that um, I love access to leverage because of all of the benefits that it provides. Uh, there is absolutely nothing uh, like uh, paying off a loan, okay? There is a freedom that comes with, just take your mortgage, paying off your mortgage. There is a lightness of being that comes along with something like that. When you pay off a loan that you had on a business, okay, uh, it, it not only removes that burden, but boom, I mean, it, it's like an immediate cash flow boost to the whole company. And the feeling that, that you get when you get, when you, when you do the whole story arc, of paying off that loan and having the asset pay off that loan, you all of a sudden realize that you know uh, you were smart. Uh, you did something that created a tremendous amount of value. Uh, the bank was there to help you get this done, and ultimately, uh, the bank only made you know four, five, six percent. While you are now sitting here with this asset, this box that is generating cash, and more importantly, providing value okay, to its customers, to its employees, to you and your family, okay? It's a, it's a community, a business is a community. Um, listen, uh, after writing Buy Then Build, I had a number of people sort of, you know, follow me around and ask me, will you help me uh, find and buy a business? Uh, I don't like the buy side business uh, uh, advisor model where you charge, you know, uh, five, 10, 20,000 a month plus a success fee in order to try to help you find something that you may or may not work on. So what we did was create the Acquisition Lab, which is the world's first do it with you buy side advisory service. Um, it's a vetted community. Only about 25% of applicants are actually accepted. We wanna make sure that you have the financial wherewithal uh, and that you can actually be a CEO, okay? And that the timing's right for you, okay? So keep, keep that in mind. We turn away 75% of people that want to give us money, okay? So when you get accepted into the acquisition lab, the community, um, it's not a typical you know, online course community where you end up in some Facebook group with a bunch of people that are asking you know, uh, entry level questions that, that uh, um, you know, no one's actually gonna do anything, okay? Um, in the last 12 months, uh, we've brought in um, you know, 150 members and we've actually closed north of 30 transactions uh, with an average deal value approaching two million dollars okay so we've got a massive impact uh, on the people that we're working with in the acquisition lab it's world-class instruction okay um, uh, group coaching and it's not you know just me i've got a whole team of coaches that have all bought companies 
um, already, including traditional search funds, manufacturing, service industry, uh, even franchise and uh, online businesses um, as well. Um, uh, we, and of course, Chelsea, our chief of staff, took a company from $3 billion to $6 billion doing buy side biz dev. So, you know, she brings something to the table. Uh, you know, so, so the thing is, is we've got, you know, world class instruction, uh, group coaching, uh, tools and resources to help get to your goal, and a vetted community of people that are all working together to help you acquire the business that, that you want to acquire. Um, so please check it out at acquisitionlab.com uh, or check out all of our free resources on buythenbuild.com and I'll see you on the inside.